Welcome to a new video and I'm excited to finally bring you the best farming methods. Now I've done this before, but not quite like this. This had to be the one, the one that went into everything, every little bit of farming. And I thought maybe I should put in my degree, you know, I spent a good amount of money on it. And let's bring maths into all of this so we get the definitive best farming strategy. Today we will be using facts and numbers to show what is the best farming method for each circumstance. Let's begin. There are many different circumstances, many different towers that create money. Now there are a few main ones that people use including the farm or the buccaneer, but there are many towers and many sub towers including tiers that create money. So how much money does a regular farm give you? So the banana farm costing $12.50 produces four $20 bananas per round. I do have to add your first farm could be cheaper because of the knowledge, but I'm not going to add that in because it's only one farm and that doesn't really affect much. Let's begin with the top path farms. Increased production basically just adds on two and then so does greater production. As you can see, the prices here do increase, but you don't gain too much more. Obviously, when you add valuable bananas into the mix, they do gain even more money. But again, it's not a massive increase, although with not a massive expense either. We then gain eight more bananas for a hefty 3000 sum. But then moving to BRF, Banana Research Facility, we get five lots of 300 around. Or going to Banana Century at five 1200 around including BRF crates worth 25% more, although that is rounded down. It's useful to note the prices of BRF and Banana Central as it becomes quite important when you look at overall value and farming ability. So let's have a little look at banking, shall we? We're going to skip the first two tiers so that are actually kind of useless. I mean, only really for a cross path, so we can go to uh, Monkey Bank straight away. There is a lot to read here, so let me break it down. The production on all of them is the same. They make 230 around, 241, 257, depending on if they have Benjamin's bank hack, that's at the top. Um, and the amount that can be stored is different depending on the tower and if you have the monkey knowledge. IMF loan gives you 10k, but you have to pay it back at 50% what you make. Or if you have monkey nomics, you don't actually have to pay it back at all and you get free money. So let me graph and show you how monkey banks make money. So you can tell which round you make money. I think it will be a lot more easy to understand. You might be asking what is this mess on your screen? Well, it's not a mess at all. Each level shows the amount you make at the end of each round. As you can see, as you go through the rounds, it massively increases and it takes about 11 to 12 rounds to make it all the way to 7k and max out your regular bank. And with the extra monkey knowledge, it could take all the way up to 14 to 15 rounds to get all the way to your IMF loan 12.5k maximum. If you deposit six and a half grand at the start of the round, you can see how much quickly, how much quicker you can get to that lovely number. You can see it only takes about three rounds, three to four rounds to get all the way to your 12 grand. I spent way too long making them curves, so let's get onto the bottom path before I die. I am again skipping the first two tiers because they're kind of useless. Don't worry about them. For the bottom path of farms, we see something very different. Marketplace makes the same amount as plantation, costing less overall. Central market makes not that much money in comparison to how much it costs but gives 10% more to merchantmen up to 10 times so you can get 200% on your merchantmen and monkey wall street although costing 60k makes the same central market plus 4,000 at the end of each round it's useful to note here how much the cross paths change everything including how much the knowledge also changes things and what you actually want to cross path if you go for any of these options as you can see, the Merchantman, Favoured Trades and Trade Empire are actually pretty good at making money for their price. Merchantman only costing 2300 plus the original cost obviously, to make 200 around and do damage. Favoured Trades increase that to 500 and 800 etc etc, 
but the main part is the trade empire which can give you 400 per ship extra money including extra damage but i'm not showing that here because we're only interested in money it has to be said one of the biggest benefits of merchantmen or going all the way from the buccaneer line is the fact that it does damage while making money which means you don't need to focus as much on wasting money on defending you're wasting money on making money and it defends honestly these are all of the important towers there are other other towers that make money but they're not really important because they don't make that much or they just not worth it or cost too much or etc etc so what is the best farming strat well i've gave you all the numbers so i mean at the end of the day you can choose yourself or you can experiment or try but there are some very obvious and clear things that you can't argue with that are just better than others for example marketplace is just better than plantation you can start both of these as 200 zero, zero, and then Obviously you'd get plantation first, but it would be making 320 around. If you spent a little bit extra money, it's like two, three hundred more to get all the way to 203, you'd be making 400 around once you got there. The real question is which way is best to make a marketplace? So the two options that make the most sense and you don't even have to think about it really, is you either go 200 and then 203 or 003 and 023. Well this becomes tricky because 200 to 003 would technically make a higher performing marketplace quicker. However, if you go the other way, you make a better performing marketplace that you'll have for longer. I think it heavily depends on context, how long you're gonna have the tower for and what round you're on because how much you make per round is how much extra time it's going to take to go from one way or the other way so i mean it depends on you really but past this and now you're doing the farming you're getting zero two three marketplaces because they're better than two zero three by 16 around what are you getting next well it really depends on what final strategy you're going for and there's really three you can go for Number one, you either spam banana research facilities and then eventually you get a banana central and even maybe a village, Monkey Tropolis, to take off some of the load and some of the space that your bananas are taking up so you can put even more down. Number two is IMF loan spam. If you don't know about IMF loan spam, you get the loan, you make another IMF loan and you make enough money where you're exponentially creating money to pay back what you actually owe. This can be very, very efficient, and if done right, is very, very good. Number three, and a lot of people's favorites, is Trade Empire plus Central Markets. This is because you can go straight from the marketplace to Central Markets, and then you're not really having to sell and waste a bit of money. Unfortunately though, with all this information, the video has overrun, and I'm gonna have to leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger. Check in next time if you want to see me put all three of these strategies against each other and come up with the ultimate efficient farming guide. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe and peace.